Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and I'm here to talk to you about Oracle SQL CL and how you can run that in the cloud shell in the Oracle cloud to quickly connect to your Oracle database all from a command line prompt. Now if you've used an Oracle database, especially uh, an autonomous Oracle database in the Oracle cloud, then you're probably already familiar with SQL Developer Web, which it gives you the ability to run SQL statements, peel SQL blocks, create tables, import data, create data diagrams um, in your browser. Uh, but today I wanted to show you a, a command line um, version of this. And of course, you're probably also familiar with um, SQL Developer, which is our desktop tool where a lot of this code started out as. About six years ago, we put out something called Oracle SQL CL, which is a command line um, sort of take of SQL Developer. And it married all of the things that you liked about SQL Plus and all of the things you liked about SQL Developer. And we just tried to modernize how a command prompt would work for an Oracle database. Okay, so I'm just gonna go log in to cloudoracle.com. And I've already created a um, autonomous uh, transaction processing database. And I'm going to show you how to launch a SQL prompt directly from the browser. Now I could come in here and prove to you that I do indeed have an autonomous database. And I could come in and launch SQL Dev Web from here. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to redirect your eye up here to this area, this little button here where it says Cloud Shell. We're going to click that. And it's got a revive. I think it's a Docker image. OK, so here I am at my prompt. And these images are persistent, so things that I've done before are still here. Uh, that wallet file there um, has a um, TNS names and a SQL net aura and an actual um, wallet in there so I can connect uh, an encrypted end-to-end -to, -end to my Oracle database. So it's very secure even though I am in a browser. And without that um, wallet file, I'm not going to be able to get into my database. Um, now, if you're doing this for the very first time, you're not going to have that file in your um, shell. And there's a couple different ways you can go get it. There's a REST API. You can go over here to um, the console and, and download it and, and move it up in here manually. But there's a much easier way to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to run this command again and give it a different file to download to. All right, so now if I look, I've got two of these zips and they're actually the exact same thing. So with this zip file um, available, I can now very easily make a connection to my database using SQL CL from a SQL prompt. And to launch SQL CL, all I have to do is type SQL. I can say which SQL and you can see where it's installed. This is all done for you the very instant you, you launch Cloud Shell. You don't have to do a yum install SQL CL. It, it's already there and pre-configured. Now to connect, I need to tell SQL CL about this zip file. So I'm going to launch SQL with the no log, which is short for no login. So it's just going to start up the program without actually attempting a connection. And we created a command called set cloud config. And I just uh, tell it that, that zip file. So I can say my wallet zip. And it's telling us that uh, it's successfully um, loaded those files into memory. And now there's another SQL um, CL command I can use called show TNS. And it tells me um, the TNS file that it's reading from. And it's also listing the entries in the TNS file that I can use to make a connection. Um, if this were a regional wallet and if it had um, seven or eight databases in my tenancy, then I would have many more 
um, connections here to choose from. Uh, but this is just a single instance. And with transaction processing, you get a um, low, medium, high transaction processing and transaction processing urgent um, set of services you can connect to. And each of these come with different amounts of processes that can be used, different amounts of memory um, that can be used. Uh, when in doubt, go with low or medium. Of course, the more um, horsepower you consume, um, the more um, work that you're putting onto the system and the more you're going to have to pay for it later. Um, thankfully, I'm in my always free um, instance, so all of this for me is totally free and that can be free for you as well. So to connect, I need an Oracle account. So you have the admin account that you can use that's there by default. I've went ahead and created a, a account just for me that doesn't have um, admin privs to it. It's just general dev stuff. So I can say connect Jeff at, I'm going to say the medium one. And I'm in. So I've got a um, history command in here, so I can see what I've ran here previously. So I could run through that just with my up and down arrow key if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that. Let's just give you a quick tour of what you can do uh, with the SQL prompt here in your always free autonomous database. So I like to type CLS a lot, just a bad habit, but you can actually have alias commands. I can say alias CLS equals clear screen. So I'm not going to make that mistake anymore. Um, there's another alias called tables that I can run, and it gives me a list of the tables that I've created previously. So if I want to know more about these, I could of course run describe, but there's a, a newer version um, of that command called info, which is short for information. So I could say info dd, and it's telling me about that table. Um, I can also do info plus dd, and I don't know if this was extremely evident, um, but there was a place here for column comments. And info dd says we're going to replace the column comments with column statistics. And let's change this font down. There, it's a little easier to read. So I can start just typing SQL statements here. So I can say select star from dd where tab, and we have um, column completion. So these are all the columns in the table. So I could say where um, generated is not null. And that's a whole lot of data coming back that I don't need. <laughs> Uh, so I hit Control C to um, uh, to cancel that query, and you'll see SQL CL is trying to squeeze everything on the screen and make it easy to read, but this table is just too wide um, for it to see everything. So if I come back and do an info on DD, I can see the columns there. So if I shorten this up a bit, we could have um, create DD2 as select owner object name. Let's do um, object type uh, created, and let's do one more. Let's do um, last DDL time from all objects. Oh. So up arrow gives me the last command, so I don't have to type all that all over again. I can just say right there, and control R says run immediate. All right, and so I say info dd2. Cool. 
we can see that um, the table was automatically analyzed by the optimizer. So it knows what's going on. Um, so I can say select star from DD2. And I can also say, let's just fetch the first 25 rows only. So much easier to read. We can say set page size 50, run that command again, and there it is all in one screen. Let's just look at all the commands you have access to. So I'm not going to explain all of these, and many of them are familiar to you if you've ever used SQL Plus. Um, you've seen me use alias, and you've seen me use info and info plus, but some other ones to call out here. Um, there's the DDL command, so I can say DDL DD2, and this will get for me the DBMS um, metadata generated version of the DDL required to create this table. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Let's look at um, some of the things that I know regular SQL CL users get a kick out of. So if we look at that last select statement we ran, um, that's just a kind of table-based um, result set, but I can say set SQL format um, CSV and say run again, and the results came back formatted as CSV. So there's a quite a few of these formats that we support. If I say JSON, and guess what that's going to do? Uh, if you want pretty JSON, we could say set SQL format JSON formatted. And there's that. Now, if I wanted to send this to a file, I can do that. There's a spool command. Uh, so I can say spool dd2 json and I can say select star from dd2 of fetch first 50 rows only spool off come out and then we can look at it here and uh, there's the dd2 json so I can say more dd2 json Of course, if I want to come back into my SQL prompt, I just need to reset things up. That finger. PJ is in TP. There we go. So the cool thing, like I said, the history is still in here. Everything I just did in that previous session is in here, and I can come back and take advantage um, of that. I'm not the best typer in the world, so. Um, as you're writing SQL out, if you need to make changes to it, um, the editor supports that. I can just come straight up here with my arrow keys and change things. So again, I can do tab and get that list of columns. So I can say owner and um, last DDL time, and I can say control R. Take one last look at the help, see if there are any last commands we might want to give a quick shout out to. I think DDL and info um, in the set SQL format, um, plus the SQL history and the tab completion, those things right there, I think, demonstrate more than enough reason to give um, SQL CL um, a chance. And if we're right here in the browser, I mean, it's simple as typing the word SQL, and it makes it also really easy to set up um, your wallet file so you can connect securely to your system. So I'm just going to say, if you want to learn more about SQL CL, then um, take a look at my blog, thatjeffsmith.com. Check out the other videos on this channel. 
Um, and if you have any questions about Oracle Autonomous Database, be sure to follow people like Maria Colgan, Todd Sharp, and Gerald Finzel, uh, and myself. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.